Miss Emma Valdez. Yes, it's me. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, you can call me Sheena. You don't need to call me ma'am. Okay, Sheena. Sure. So, I'm going to be your interviewer for today. Uh, I'm going to be asking you a series of questions about yourself, uh, your background, why you're a good fit for the job. And throughout the interview, I'm also going to be taking notes here. So I hope it won't be too distracting for you. But rest assured that I will be listening. And feel free to ask any questions throughout the interview. Okay? Got it. Perfect. And by the way, how do you want me to call you? Uh, Emma will do. Perfect. Okay, let's start. So, of course, I'm going to have to ask you to tell me something about yourself. Okay. I can summarize myself in two adjectives. Um, ambitious, but practical. This explains why I'm sitting here with you. Two years ago, I was a third year student of Bachelor of Science in Hotel and Restaurant Management. I learned how to prepare a good meal, how to be an efficient housekeeper, how to manage an event, among other things. Unfortunately though, COVID happened and I had to drop out of college for financial reasons. But now that life is coming back to normal, I decided that instead of going back to school, I would like to apply for a job in the BPO industry. So you had to quit school because of the pandemic, and now that you have the option to come back, you decided to apply for a call center job instead. Yes. Why? First, I want to help my parents get back on their feet financially. And second, I want to be able to gain real world experience and practical skills. And I believe that the call center industry could really help me with that. And how long do you intend to work before you go back to school? Honestly, it's hard to tell exactly when or if I ever will. This is an opportunity that I am yet to explore, so anything could happen. But my plan is to at least work for three years, and then I would reconsider my options by then. Okay. And what is your idea of a call center? For me, a call center is an office where... Agents handle phone calls from customers who are inquiring about products and services. Because mm -hmm. of this setup, uh, customers can transact from the comfort of their own homes. Uh, salespeople don't need to knock door to door just to sell. And technicians are only dispatched when necessary. So it's a huge convenience for everyone. Mm -hmm. And are you amenable to working the graveyard shift and holidays? Absolutely. Okay. What about Christmas and New Year? Um, are you okay with working during those holidays and not being with your family? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. So do you think that you can handle irate customers? I'm confident that I can, yes. In my two and a half years in HRM, I have learned a number of transferable, transferable skills that I believe will come in handy in a call center workplace. And what are those skills? Can you give me a rundown? Okay. Uh, well, from the name itself, hotel and restaurant management, a lot of people would think that we're only taught hard skills like cooking, preparing the beverages, uh, changing the sheets, the hotel sheets. But we're actually also taught a lot of soft skills, communication skills, first of all, because we have to interact with clients. Uh, multitasking, because... Uh, we're bound to work on peak seasons. Adaptability, because change is always going to happen in the hospitality industry, always to be expected. And culture awareness as well, because we encounter people from all walks of life. And so these are the skills that I learned from HRM, which I believe could be transferable to the job description of a call center agent. And what do you think is the best way to handle an irate customer? I think it's a case-to-case -case basis, but in general, when you're dealing with an irate customer, you want to first give her the floor to vent. You have to allow her that luxury to vent. Because as soon as a customer is able to vent her frustration, she will eventually be willing to talk and negotiate and talk to you rationally. 
And why did you want to work at our company? Before I decided to apply, I made a list of the top BPO com companies here in Cebu. And Question tops my list for two reasons. First, according to my research, you have been the recipient of the, the International ABC Awards and Best Company of the Year in 2020. Mm -hmm. Second, and more of a personal reason, is I have two friends who work here and they couldn't be any happier with the perks they're getting. They also truly believe that your company genuinely cares about its employees. And I want to be a part of Question. And are you currently interviewing with other companies? I'm scheduled to have my initial interview tomorrow at Converges, but your company really is my first choice because it's recommended to me by two people I know. Mm -hmm. And uh, why do you think should we hire you? Well, unlike most students who drop their studies to earn a living, I do not think that working as an agent is a step backward. Sure, it's different. Sure, it's unconventional. But I believe that this industry is going to open new and interesting doors for me in the future. If you were to hire me, you can very well expect that I will treat this job as how I treat anything important in my life, like an art. Uh, no grumbling, just hustling. Uh, that and the transferable skills I learned from HRM is why are why you should hire mm -hmm. me. Interesting. So can you tell me about a time when you treated a task like an art, as you said? Uh, paint me a picture of that. What does that look like? Well, everything in HRM really is about art. You can see it in the way we present ourselves, how we fold the linens, how we decorate the cakes, art. But one experience I remember in particular was when we designed this towering four-layer cake for a school event. We paid so much attention to its every detail that we ended up sourcing the ingredients from three different suppliers. So one supplier for the frosting, one for the filling, and then one for the decorations. And it took us 18 hours to prepare, bake, and decorate everything. But when we saw the final result, for us, it was the definition of a, of a masterpiece. Um, so much so that when we cut the first slice, it felt like we were committing a crime. Wow. That was fantastic. I'm sure it was delicious. Um, our instructor said that it was, and we were so happy about it. Fantastic. Now, if we are to hire you and you'd be on the floor taking calls, what do you think would be your biggest weakness by then? My weakness when I'm taking calls? Mm -hmm. Yes, your, your weakness when specifically taking calls. Okay, I, I think that's going to be the information overload i there will be times i think that i will not know what to say to the customer even if i have undergone the training because i've heard from my agent friends that it is possible to know the procedures and the policies during the training and then freeze in the middle of a conversation with a customer but I am sure that it's something that I can overcome. It's something that I can get used to eventually. So I'm confident that that's not going to be a problem in the long run. Mm -hmm. And what are your pet peeves? Well, I only have one pet peeve, and that is disorganization. Uh, at school, before I start a project, I always make it a point to create a sort of a timeline so I know what to prioritize and when to expect every aspect of that project. Uh, I just love it when everything is organized and but I know that I have to make room for some type of chaos and for creativity but I find that I always thrive when everything is organized. Okay so now I have pretty much learned a good deal about you but can you tell me something that is not on your resume? Not on my resume. Mm -hmm. 
Well, when, when I was in grade six, I decided to start writing my journal. And now, eight, year, eight years later, 16 notebooks later, I still write a journal. Uh, it's where I keep my thoughts and memories that I want my future self to remember about my past self. It's also where I, where I set my goals. I guess I'm mentioning this because I believe that writing those journals helped me a lot when it comes to developing uh, a healthy sense of self-awareness and discipline. It's a, For me, it's a sort of a life compass if there ever is one. Interesting. If you were an animal, what would you be and why? <laughs> now that is an interesting question. Mm. If I were an animal, I think I would be a worker bee because worker bees possess an indispensable and essential skill set. So essential are these other skills that without them, the colony and the queen will not be able to survive. For example, uh, they forage food for the queen, they ventilate the hive, and they protect the hive from intruders. And without them, the colony just cannot survive. That's fascinating. Now, another question. If money were no object, and you don't have to earn a living, you can do anything you want, what would you do with it? Or what would you do, and why? Hmm, that's a very interesting question. Um, because if, if money were no object... I think that wouldn't necessarily solve all my problems. Um, sure, it will solve a lot of all my financial problems, but I think that there will still be problems, a different set of problems. Good point. What what problems, for example? Well, after the high of you know traveling around the world and buying all the luxury items that money could buy, I think that there will be a problem mm -hmm. of feeling unfulfilled and a, a kind of hunger for something meaningful to do. Okay, now what will you do at that point? I think that I would probably use my wealth to provide an inexhaustible resource to all people on earth. You know, something that once, give, once shared isn't just going to run out like money. And I think that would be free education. It, it sounds cliche, but when you give people money, the, that money runs out. But if you give them free education, they will eventually use that to make their lives better. So I think that I would get my money's worth by giving them free education. And who knows, we might just find that one bright mind who one day might be able to cure cancer or you know, help stop climate change. What are your salary expectations? Um, so my salary expectations are 25,000 to 30,000 pesos a month. I do understand that similar positions to the one I'm applying for offer salaries within that range for beginners. Now, last question. Do you have any questions for me? Yes, I do. Um, is working remotely a, an option for this position? No, uh, there used to be, but that was only temporary during the pandemic. We we find that uh, employees who work in the office, in an office, are just more productive compared to the ones who work from home. And that's the current what the current data suggest, suggests. So we prefer our employees to work in the office. But um, would this be a problem for you, though? Well, not really. I just live 10 minutes away so I can work in the office. Perfect. Any more questions? That is all, Maya. Thank you so much for your time. You're most welcome, Emma. Thank you so much for your time. Kindly wait outside until I finish interviewing everyone. Okay? Sure. Bye. Bye-bye.